so 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 there so 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 welcome back everybody my name is lucas and this is my journey through lambda school so it's been a couple of weeks since i posted in uh my previous video a lot's gone on in the past couple of weeks primarily i've been moving so um, there's been a, I've actually got a new apartment here that I will include some photos of now. Looks great, doesn't it? I think so too. My girlfriend is a phenomenal designer and I'm looking over here to my left at her as she gives me the weirdest effing smile. Back to the matter at hand. There's a lot that I've got to catch up on, primarily the first week is build week. So that was the week where as a team, we built a whole project uh, together basically from scratch. That was the guess who Twitter app game. I'll get into that and show you kind of all of that. And then this week we've been working on applied JavaScript, which is uh, working with the DOM, creating elements, using JavaScript that we learned in order to manipulate the actual uh, web browser, of course. Now. I have some um, interesting news that I will be traveling to Hawaii actually next week. So in order to get ahead so I wasn't behind while I was traveling, I worked on a lot of next week's stuff as well. So I'm going to cover three weeks worth of stuff in this video. So it's going to be a lot, but this will actually show you a lot of what happens during Lambda School, uh, primarily project-wise. And I was really, really excited to be able to say, wow. In the matter of two weeks, I have been able to start and complete, um, what is that, almost 10 different projects now. So it's, it's really cool to see how much is done. But with that, let's go ahead and dive into the Guess Who Build Week project. Okay, so I may have shown some of this to you uh, last week, but I wanted to touch back on it. So for Build Week, we have four days to start and complete a, an entire project. So my responsibility was to build a landing page and we had a team of 11 people that were dedicated to back end, uh, data science, front end, web, uh, in order to get this whole project done. We had an iOS developer as well. So a lot of moving parts that were able to work on this project. My responsibility was just to build a landing page. But unfortunately we didn't have any sort of designs starting off. So I took the liberty to build some stuff using Figma that I wanted to show you here. At first it started as a level based game, but we quickly realized this was gonna be a little too much for people. So I had authentication, we were gonna have a menu screen, like so that you could have your points and hints, as well as the categories. From there, you would come here to the menu navigation where you can come from the category. If you clicked on your profile, it would have some information. If you clicked on settings, it would go to a settings page, as well as you could buy more points or you could buy more hints, and then you would unlock levels via uh, using your stars. And as you went to a level, it would, oh, where we go here. So when you tapped on a category, it would take you to the level screen, and upon clicking on a level screen, it would take you to the actual game play that for us ended up being this last screen here where you'd be given three, op three choices, and you would see what level you were on. You would have to guess the right person, and if you guessed wrong, you would lose, and if you guessed right, you would continue and this is what the level completion would look like. So you'd be done, you would move on to level two, and you would get extra points for having completed it. So that was the initial concept. As I said, this proved to be a little much starting off. So we turned this into a streak-based game. What that included. So there was a very simple login with Twitter, and then from here, this would be the immediate menu that you'd go into, you would have a uh, profile and then you'd have your settings and then you would immediately jump into the gameplay from the candidates so if you get it right you move on you get it wrong and you lose and you get a new high score um, and that was it so 
a very simplified game, but still a lot of moving parts. You still have to uh, pull in tweets. You still have to pull in potential candidates. You still have to track um, wins. You have to just track that based upon the uh, the profiles. So a lot of things to take into consideration. What did this end up looking like? Let's take a look. This is what the uh, website ended up looking like. So I designed this website for our landing page and as you can see it's kind of modeled off of the game of course and it is fully responsive so uh, this was desktop version I had it very you know button playful layout with the categories and the sample tweets and then a call to action to get started and if we had a download button you'd click it there. The thing that I spent a lot of time working on that was a pain in the rear is this mobile view of tweets so I wanted to do a horizontal scrolling left and right which didn't end up working out as right as I wanted to you can see how it sticks here on the end that I did not want but you know on mobile this actually worked out pretty well because you could actually play with this and slide around and I uh, designed it such that you know you can actually tell that hey there's something that can slide here so that was actually really fun to do very difficult to accomplish though um, but that was the landing page that I built out so once we start playing we click on you know play now once you log in you can see here that we're actually able to get it to model pretty well it doesn't have the actual you know specific information and uh, with the actual Twitter handle but they did local authentication and these screens don't really do much but you can tell that the UI worked which was nice and once you get into the game I'll click presidential candidates and it pulls up exactly what it was supposed to do so uh, all in all I was actually really impressed with our front and back end engineers uh, who were able to pull this off in the end we see here climate action should be this generation's moonshot if you're with me add your name that sounds like a Warren statement and let's check our answer and we were wrong it was Kristen Gillibrand okay well let's play again see what we get told voters he tackled the issues He's failed to deliver. I won't. He makes promises. I'll make progress. That's, uh, let's see if it was Kristen again. Hey, so we got it right. So we go on to the next one. And I'm just going to guess because I don't care. And I lost. So that was pretty much it, the name of the game. And you can see that it keeps my high score here. But this was a lot of fun to do and a lot of fun to work on. And, um, I, I actually got to present this as well, which was a lot of fun. So basically, uh, in front of everybody that is Lambda School, I was pitching our product basically as a newest, hottest game. I wish I had a recording of it. Actually, I do have a recording of it, and I'll get that out. I'll see if I can't find it. I do want to take a second to shout out some of my team members because they were awesome people to work with and I quite enjoyed it. The About Us page was a fun page to build and you can see we had a pretty significantly sized team but uh, everybody, this is Richmond and Matt, he was the original uh, creator of the game. This is myself as you can see and everybody else here. We had Daniel, we had Kenna, we had Jerry, Kai, Steven, we had v Virginia and Clark as well as Steven again all phenomenal teammates. I highly commend them for the work that they did, especially for a team that you know is all still learning uh, about how to actually do any of this. I was, I, I quite enjoyed it. So it'll be interesting to see if we get to work together again in the near future here. But that is that project. Let's get into this week. Okay, so you may have seen the site before. This is the Great Idea website. This whole week was all about DOM manipulation. So we, we used our skills with JavaScript and applied them to the DOM. Learned a ton about what it actually meant to manipulate the DOM. Learned about uh, the DOM, the render tree, as well as the window document model and uh, the CSS OM, the o CSS object model, and how all of this actually comes down together to create what's rendered on the browser. Uh, it was interesting to read into all of this because it made my understanding of how React works that much better, um, which is next week, but I'd had some experience with React, and so seeing all of this really gave me a good understanding of what was happening under the hood with 
how JSX worked, how the rendering was working, how these components were working. So that was a big part of this week's project. So Dom, you've seen the Great Idea website, this is just as it is before, nothing has changed. The difference is, is that this was built from a JSON object. So if I jump into the actual code here, let's see if this is the DOM one. So yeah, so you can see the HTML is blank links with blank object uh, or, or element containers and nothing's really in it. It's just a framework for the DOM. And then everything else was this very, very, very tedious, but but very useful and educational process in order to take this site contact, in order to take these site content JSON object, go through it, and create elements. So creating the A link, adding the pricing, adding a link, and setting attributes. Very, very rigorous process, very tedious process. But this is how all of these uh, like frameworks like react and angular are really working under the hood anyway so adding and this is a stretch goal was to add some event listeners for this one but we get into a lot of that soon so this was a really interesting project to work on to start with from there we went on to Dom 2 which in this case you've seen the the fun bus uh, project before as well and we were working exclusively with event listeners so this one is one of my favorites let me see if I can't pull it up here. So again, a more or less empty, um, oh, actually, let me see. No, no, no. So this one was really full. Uh, all we had to do was create event listeners. So they gave us 12 different event list listeners that we had to use. So this included click, mouse down. What else was there? Index.js. Also mouse over, mouse leave. Clicks, wheels, drag, drops, load, focus, resize, scroll, select, double click, and even an animation thing to work with. So really cool to actually get to see a lot of this. And so without further ado, I'll show you some of my fun little, little things. So when you resize the window, everything shakes. Oh, let's get it to, so everything shakes there. And then when you resize it again, it should toggle it off. The way that the resize window call function works is a little uh, finicky. There we go. Uh, from there, you can see that if I hover over it, it stops. If I get out, it continues to go. So mouse over, mouse leave, um, event listener, sorry. Other one was this one. So on scroll, it actually grows. On this one, it shrinks. Um, if you see here, you can actually just on the bottom here, watch the radius. It actually gets bigger as you scroll and smaller as I scroll up. So that was a fun one. Then obviously on, um, oh, the other one was here as a text box. If I enter in some text, I have some text. And if you select it, it actually will automatically change everything, all the other text to the text you've selected, which was a fun one as well. Uh, grabbed all the text elements and then my absolute favorite one back to the 90s on a click on a key down event it adds a cat so if I click click away tap on the keyboard all I do is create a bunch of cats that are rendered to the screen which is what better fun than that on to day three so this would have been Wednesday of this week so on Wednesday, we were working more with components, so understanding how components work and using, you know, document.createElement and function. So we were actually creating a function that would iteratively call or iteratively be called to create, you know, components. So this was a component that would have styles, it would have some JavaScript with it, it would have the components built in or, or elements in the component itself, which was... Uh, pretty straightforward given the past couple of days all you basically did was do what we were doing and just wrap it in a function that we could call over and over again so this actually wasn't near as bad as it could be with that we also had some event listeners to open and close the content basically animating the size of the article um, content space so that that would happen and then also a hide and close uh, div or uh, sidebar here on the left so Pretty straightforward on this one, nothing too crazy, but that was working with components. 
So that was Wednesday. Now on to uh, Thursday, where we actually worked with some APIs, specifically the GitHub API. Day four, this is Thursday. We were creating a component that would be a card for a GitHub user. So we working with GitHub's API to pull not only to pull our information and then our followers information. So uh, using the JSON that's given back from the API, working with Axios in order to make the calls and then creating a component that would render this to the page. The stretch goal was to include this commit history uh, object, which was also really fun to work with. So I was able to add that into the cards as well. But as you can see, it works just as it's planned. So every, uh, so there's myself and then every single one of my followers, a lot of these are Lambda School students. So we've been uh, working with each other to uh, fill in our, uh, you know, follower accounts with each other. So this was a lot of fun to make as well. Again, a uh, big, big extension of what we've been working with, creating a component. And I'll actually show you kind of what this looks like here. So we, where are we? So I had this work in a specific way where I had an async await function that would call Axios uh, on the get user. And then once it returned the information, I would call the create user card. Once it called the create user card, that's what would actually render to the page. And then what I would do is I iterated after building out quite a bit of information, a, a function called recursive, which I'll get into in a second, that would just go through and depending upon how many followers they had, it would go and grab and continue to iterate through their followers in order to produce the list. The reason this is called recursive is because I originally had this set up to where it was going to get every follower's follower and actually be a recursive function. Uh, that quickly failed as I immediately, when I called it, made about 1,200 GitHub API requests in a matter of about 10 seconds. And um, my API limit was reached very quickly. So I had to stop that and restart with the next day. So I broke the API, which was fun, but always a fun challenge to kind of break things when you're not supposed to. Nonetheless, this was a really cool challenge to work with and create something like this. And I like looking back on it. So uh, another great project to work on. And it's crazy to see how in the matter of four days going from creating an actual element on a page to creating an API request to a function that'll actually generate a component that is rendered onto the page continuously. Now, limited functionality for this right now, but the ability to create more of this is awesome. So in a very short amount of time, able to do quite a bit of stuff. Again, landing school just moves really freaking fast. So I'm gonna take a quick break right now, but um, when I get back, we will jump into not We'll jump into the sprint challenge for this week, and then we'll jump into what is coming up for next week that is all React-based, and that is going to be really fun. Sure. Okay, we are back um, from my little break here, and I was pulling up some of the other projects that we were working on for this week. So first was the sprint challenge applied JavaScript. So for this week, like I said, we were going over all of the elements of creating DOM elements, manipulating them, working with event listeners, creating functional components, working with fetch, uh, working with Axios in order to make API calls. So all of that culminated into our sprint challenge for applied JavaScript. So the, this was the end result, Lambda times. So we had to create this header here that was given to us from a JSON object. We then had to create these buttons that were also given to us from a JSON object. And then we were given these cards. We had to create the cards. The classes were already given to us, so that it was styled accordingly. But we had to create these components that would show each of these. Let me shrink myself. That would sh uh, create all of these cards. So 
that was the pretty much the objective. That did not take very long. Um, it was a little tedious to create the components, but it wasn't that bad of a challenge. What what really became more difficult was creating this carousel. So the carousel was actually one of the hardest things to do. I spent over an hour and a half creating this little carousel, and it still is not exactly how I would like it, but it works functionally. So when you click on the button, it will cycle and loop through the different images over and over again. And if I go the other way, it'll cycle backwards as well. It does not slide left and right according to which button you're pressing, which is what ideally I would have liked it to do. Uh, but I feel, I figured that this sufficed for what needed to be accomplished. On top of that, we also had these buttons here that would actually toggle the different articles based upon the content. So if I did Node, it would only pull up the two Node.js. And then if I do Bootstrap, it would pull up the three that are Bootstrap. If I do JavaScript, it pulls up the four that are JavaScript. And then if I hit All, it will show all of them. So this was a three hour sprint challenge. This did take me a little over maybe three and a half hours to accomplish all of it, uh, which was doable, but pretty difficult. So that, with most of the time being taken up from this silly little carousel thing here. But as a challenge, it incorporated all of the things that we had done that week, which was creating elements, using functions to uh, create these components, using Axios to get JSON object, and then use that accordingly. And then some, um, and I think this, let me see here, if it actually used, yeah, and also working with less in order to get like the carousel to look correct and whatnot. So had to work with some of less as well. Building on top of everything that we'd been previously doing and they're doing it in a way that I think is really, really intuitive and an extension of what we've been previously learning. So that was this past week. Now let's get into next week, which is React. No. What's up? Is it really? Okay, so this is the first project that we have to do for React. Getting into React is not easy. However, for given front-end frameworks, React is undoubtedly one of the fastest frameworks to get up and running with. So based on everything else we've done before, React is a, a very easy extension of everything that we've done. Understanding and getting used to JSX, getting used to... Um, props and one-way data binding can be a little difficult at first, but overall it's not the worst thing in the world. So from here we had to um, 
we had a couple of buttons that were the home touchdown, away touchdown, home field goal, and away field goal. And we were to click the buttons and update the scores accordingly. Nothing too crazy. So if you do that, you get your six points, and you get your three points, six points, and you get your three points. Um, we basically had to create those components in order to do that, and then a couple of styling things as well. So part of the stretch goals was to make this work with uh, some of the other things. So if I do next down, it will cycle between the downs. If I do next quarter, it'll cycle between the quarters. If I decide to change how many yards are to go, I can change that, as well as what yard the ball is on. And then I added a timer to kind of just tick upward. It should be in clock format, but I figured, why not? I could have added a start and stop button to that, which would have been fun, but for the sake of the exercise, getting started with React, this was a good introduction. And so what that looked like was... Oh. So we basically did everything... Okay. We basically did everything in app.js just for the sake of getting it done, but we started off automatically with using state, so um, basically turning everything into a use state, making functional components as opposed to class-based components, and then creating functions that get passed to each component, and then updating the scores accordingly. And then, you know, passing the on-click handlers uh, to each of the buttons. I had it such that they were already done uh, with a specific update score on the button, but nonetheless, this was a... Um, Part of the challenge on getting started with react i went a little bit above and beyond on what we needed to do but nonetheless this was uh an introduction to use state to passing props around uh as well as if you wanted to get a little bit ahead use effect as well in order to get like the timers to work one of the things that always bugged me was styling so i immediately looked into how to the best practices on styling styling and it looked like it was between css modules or styled components. After looking into styled components, I'm kind of sold on using that one. So I will be using styled components for a lot of the things in React moving forward. And I'll show you what that resource here looks like in a second. But that was the very first project. Not easy to do and not hyper intuitive. So we're going to be working together as a class to really get a better understanding of how React works under the hood, which we've done a lot of, but making sure that you know we know how to use it moving forward. So that was the first project. Okay, so Lambda Calculator was the second project. So this is Tuesday of next week, but I was able to get a little bit ahead over this weekend and this past week. The Lambda Calculator kicked my tail uh, for a couple of reasons. Specifically, we had to build the layout. So we actually had to build what this calculator looked like. We had the we had the template on what it was supposed to look like, but then we had to actually build it out. I went with CSS grids because this is literally a grid, as you can see the way that the calculator's laid out. And uh, working with CSS grid for the very first time in an application was not the easiest thing to do. Once I was able to figure out how the uh, grid system really worked under the hood and how to make things move where I wanted them to, it was a lot easier to do. And then combining that with flex within this, the grid objects made life a lot easier. But I was able to get it done. This took a lot more time than it should have. And candidly, I think it would have been better if they gave us the actual uh, calculator and then had us add in the functionality, which is a lot more complicated than I had thought originally. And then it wasn't. So the way to get this to work is using eval. So I learned that JavaScript's eval function actually just takes a string and then turns it into an evaluation. So if I do 23 times three and then hit equals, we'll actually just evaluate it as a string. So uh, I was a little flabbergasted that that was a thing. But nonetheless, if I do 32 divided by three, if I do equals, it gives me the output. I had it truncated into only three decimal places because it's a very small calculator. But this was much more difficult to work with under the hood. And if I pull that up, I can show you. So we had to, and, and I, oh, so 
So we had to create a, um, they wanted us to create individual button components. I opted to create one button component that I would pass to, that would be styled how I wanted it to. And then I, and you can see this is actually a styled component. So the styled component was just a button that I imported into whatever the data was being pulled. So we had data that I pulled the numbers from, and then I gave the actual um, wrapper of the buttons, the styles in terms of the grid styles, and then as well as the flexed inside of it in order to get it to work. Passing the numbers via state, which I think was a little bit overkill, but I understand they want us to do the practice. And then passing each of the buttons, uh, each of the uh, numbers to the button. And specifically, I had a little bit of some mapping to change the width of the button if it was zero, basically. Probably not the best way to approach it, but for the sake of getting it onto the page, it worked just fine. And then evaluating, you know, uh, making sure the right values show up and that when you click, it actually gives you the number that you're looking for. Did the same thing with the operators. So each of the operations, plus, minus, subtract uh, would do the same thing except for the equals so the equals would generate a button that would calculate and then everything else would actually just perform will just print to the screen the actual button uh, itself and then the last one was the special characters where each one had a different uh, function that it would do and I just passed the on click based upon what it was so this was actually a really tough project and I'm curious to see how they wanted us to do it because they wanted us to build it with based upon a number button and an operator button and a special button that would all be different buttons but I was like no I can just use one button color it differently and then do my thing which ended up working out actually better in my opinion because I was able to control the button how I wanted to and then you know doing some styling and getting this to look the way I wanted to. So if you do percentage, it turns it into a percent. And if you do it again, looks like that breaks something. So never know what you're going to get. And then, you know, subtract. If I do times three, let's see what we get. So it calculates it properly as it should. This, like I said, it was a lot tougher than it was supposed to be, but an amazing, amazing, amazing project to really get your hands dirty with passing data around, with styling things the way you want them to get styled, with using state, we didn't use effect in this much, but all of this is difficult in a lot of different ways. So wrapping your mind around this in a very short amount of time is hard. So again, I, I, I sympathize with everybody else getting into this right from the very beginning. But another great project that I really enjoy doing that can be done in a matter of, a, you know, this took me five or six hours really to, to bust out at the end of the day. And... Um, it's something that I, I think is a really good practice on doing all these things. So A1 project for Lambda School. Okay, so this was the project for Wednesday and Thursday of next week. So the scoreboard was is tomorrow, technically. The Lambda calculator is Tuesday, and then this NASA photos is Wednesday and Thursday because Wednesday is basically just pulling in the information from the API and then Thursday is styling it using styled components. So thankfully I've kind of got a little bit of a leg up on that front, but I'll kind of dive into what this is. So NASA has an API for pulling in what they have called the photo of the day. So I pull in the photo for today and it comes with the headline, the date, if it's copyright, and then the description that it comes with. And I pull it into this nice little sidebar here. I also have a React date picker that I used to create dates. So you can pick the dates here that you want to render. And then when you do, it actually renders them here on the left panel that when you click them, it loads up into the main browser like so. So it's a nice little neat way to see all the uh, photos of the day that are going on. This was basically built almost entirely from scratch. There was no direction with it. They said, have fun, go about it. So this was actually a lot more difficult than originally conceived of uh, because it had to create a design file, not necessarily, but I created a small design file, wanted to know what it looked like and how I wanted to interact with. And I thought this would be the most fun to be able to selectively see the images and then load them up accordingly and then see the information like so. Um, this again used styled components 
So if I pull that up, let's see. So yeah, so all of these are using style components. I've got a date container, card container, sidebar container, all divs that uh, load up into my sidebar that I have here. This probably isn't the most concise way of doing it, but for the sake of, again, getting things right into the page, it worked out really well. This worked out really well, especially considering that if you look at the page, most of the data is actually held here. I only have to pass one thing up to the actual uh, main card, which is the current image. So in my main app, I only have to hold up one state, which is the current image. Everything else is handled within the sidebar. So the other big challenge, now that I'm looking at it here, not only was working with use effect, but was working with dates. So dates are a pain in the rear. Oh my gosh. I mean, whoever, whoever thought of the way dates work really, really did not think about computers running with dates. So that's always been a big challenge, but was able to get it to work. So thankfully, this date picker here, if I select a different date, let's say the 30th, it will re-render the pictures between those days. And if I go backwards in time, I can go back to June 27th and it will load all of the pictures from all the way back then. And I can scroll through them all and I can click them as I want to. So I can look at that. Look at that, Stefan's Quintent from Hubble. What a gorgeous photo. Now, unfortunately, some of the pictures use video and I haven't been able to figure out how to get the video embedded properly, but that's a project for a later date. Uh, this for me was good enough to where I got my components how I wanted them, I styled how I wanted them, I was able to pass data around, I was using effect, using API calls, using other components and passing them around. So uh, this took, this did take about two days to fully build out, which probably could have been faster, but it was really, really fun and I'm, I'm actually quite proud of this one. So I will hopefully, if I fix the uh, video embed issue, I'm going to post this to Netlify and uh, have this live as part of my portfolio because this was a fun project to build out. And the cool thing is that it's not entirely um, mobile friendly, but I've got it built to where it styles and it shows the images and displays everything really nicely so that even when you're scrolling or have different screen sizes, you know, it still looks good everywhere, uh, which was another challenging part of it. but. Part of the fun. So uh, I, I highly recommend if you get a chance, once I get this live, check it out. It's uh, really cool to see all the different NASA photos of the day. With that, that was build week. That was all of this week, creating components, and then all of next week, which is React. This is a longer video, a lot longer than I'm used to making, but there's a lot to go over. So uh, hopefully you've enjoyed seeing these projects that have been built out and I'm hoping to share some more with you in the coming weeks, uh, even while I'm in Hawaii. So hopefully I'll get a video out while I'm over there. The last thing that I wanted to go over was some of the resources as I've done in the previous videos. The biggest resources that I wanted to talk about was some of the things that I've used. So React.js uh, Date Picker was great. This is an amazing, amazing tool for picking dates and using it. And it's got like 300,000 weekly downloads. So uh, if you need dates, go ahead and just get this date picker. The other thing was styled components. The other thing was styled components from here. Um, it was a little non-intuitive at first, but once you start getting the hang of it, you're like, wow, this is really, really powerful in order to build out uh, styled components and how you want them. and pass props around. So this is actually one of the uh, up and coming um, CSS in JavaScript styling capabilities that has I think over 25,000 stars on GitHub, which is pretty impressive. Another one was Gatsby. So uh, Gatsby JS, is, their documentation, I will tell you this, is amazing. What Gatsby lets you do is create static sites that use React under the hood um, in order to publish onto the web. I've primarily it uses surge.sh for their hosting, but really, really simple, really intuitive. Their documentation is amazing and you can actually build pretty complicated websites uh, really, really easily. So quite enjoyed uh, working with Gatsby. I'm using this for my portfolio that I'm going to be putting all these other projects that I've shown you in Lambda School 
onto. With that, also there is Netlify, which is where I was hosting the Guess Who project on, and where we are hosting our uh, Guess Who project, which is a, as you can see, from local development to global deployment, all in one system that really makes deploying websites and uh, applications to the web almost seamless. So it's a Heroku-esque competitor and uh, I actually really enjoyed using it. And again, make static sites is really easy as well. All you need is a domain and point it to and basically hosting is free. No, not basically, hosting is free. The other thing was smooth horizontal scrolling. This was just a pain in the rear in order to get this to work on the site. So I dropped this in here in case you wanted to. Uh, atomic web design, this was based, this is the idea of creating molecules, or uh, creating, yeah, molecules from atoms uh, and how that works with blocks and creating components for your site. So as you can see, pretty interesting um, examples on how he thinks about designing pages. Then there was um, the 100% correct way to structure a React app or why there's no such thing. This was fun to read because as I was working on the NASA project, I wanted to really get a good way of building out the stack or the, the file structure that would work. So just doing some research. Thought it'd be a good read. This was also fun. Five tools for React developers. Make it faster. And then this is extra resources from Lambda School. So this is a huge resource in and of itself. If you ever have any questions about any of this, Synchronous, uh, asynchronous promises in JavaScript, React resources, styling, uh, animations, great, great stuff uh, for um, just extra knowledge that I'll drop the link in here. I've gone through a lot of these already and some of them are just really good. The one that I can think of primarily is uh, this Net Ninja YouTube video, Visualizing the Event Loop is really, really interesting. So if you get a chance, check that one out. And then uh, a couple of the stuff on React Hooks and some other fun videos. Fun with React Hooks was another good one that I liked as well as Use Effect. So understanding how Use Effect uh, can work is really interesting. Last but not least, a plug for my good man, Leon Ko. Leon Ko has this site called Leon's List. He is a high variance thinker and a connoisseur of all sorts of knowledge. Um, he's built this site with Notion and Netlify and Stripe in order to basically have a small self-hosted publishing site where he will be a curator of some of the most interesting content that's across the web, business, finance, sports, what you can think of, he's got something for you. I have had some of the most fascinating conversations with Leon, and I highly recommend you get a chance to reach out to him. He's more than happy to uh, chat with you in any way, shape, or form you want. Um, he needs to have his Twitter handle on here, but go check him out. Go check him out on Twitter, at Leon J. Co. With that, I appreciate you guys watching the video. Come back for the next time. If you haven't liked or subscribed it, I'd really appreciate it. I do this just because I like doing these videos and I hope that it helps somebody looking into Lambda School make a better decision and you know showcase what it is to actually be in Lambda School. With that, thank you for your time. I'll catch you next week.